Mountain Operator. And now I'd like to turn today's program over to Darren Cunningham. Darren, the floor is yours. Howdy, and welcome to Spring 2012. Um, we're excited to be here today to talk about the latest release of Informatica Cloud. And uh, this is Darren Cunningham, responsible for marketing for the Informatica Cloud uh, product line. And I'm also here with Ron Lenasson. Ron, uh, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Ron Lenasson, uh, run product management for Informatica Cloud. You may recognize him from some YouTube hits as Informatica Cloud uh, Dreamforce 2011. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we've got a pretty robust agenda. Um, we want to give you a quick update on, on, on really what's new in the release and give you our customers so you're, you've already looked at some of the things uh, that are now available to you as all our customers are upgraded uh, with every release at the same time. So everyone's running the same, um, same version, which is a great part of multi-tenancy. And um, then we're going to really dive into a couple of interesting demonstrations around what's new and, and what's coming around some of our uh, evolution to an integration platform as a service. So uh, let's go. So some, uh, you know, we know there's a lot of long timers on the call and people have been tracking this business for a while. We also know there's many of you who are new to Informatica Cloud who, who may not be as familiar as, uh, with this part of the business. And um, it's really, it's exciting to be able to put up a, a screenshot of Informatica, a press release we put out at Informatica World back in 2006. And, you know, we're gearing up at Informatica for our, our, you know, international user conference next week in Las Vegas. So Informatica World is, is, is about to get uh, underway. And back in 2006, we had a pretty aggressive roadmap around where we're going uh, as it relates to cloud computing. And we basically put it into these three buckets. First, we were going to build the connectivity to cloud applications, uh, as well as build some web services uh, capabilities for our core, you know, power center products. It was really to deliver purpose-built cloud integration services. Initially, this product line was called Informatica On Demand. Uh, about three years ago, we renamed it Informatica Cloud, and, and, and it's really been uh, accelerating growth ever since. And then now we're really excited about this next chapter in, in this part of our product line. It's really evolving Informatica Cloud to an integration platform as a service, and we'll talk a lot about that today. So, Let's talk first about what we mean by purpose-built cloud integration services. And in many respects, uh, it's almost like going to market with very focused applications to solve the very specific problems we see customers uh, facing as it relates to integration. So they're, they're fairly, fairly obvious ones, right? You need to migrate. You need to load data into a SaaS application. You need to then keep that application synchronized with existing systems. So we have a lot of front office, back office integration where you may have salesforce.com for accounts and contacts and opportunities and got a back office um, uh, accounting application for bookings, billings, invoices, and financial information. And your objective is to keep your users in the CRM environment and give them that single view. And we do, that's really the main use case of Informatica Cloud today, which is really application integration between uh, SaaS applications, whether they're uh, on-premise and in the cloud, or integrating on-premise with the cloud or, you know, cloud to cloud. Other use cases we've built applications for, we've built a data quality assessment service. Uh, built, and, and with our last release, and Ron will talk a bit about this, we introduced a contact validation service able to validate against uh, addresses calling out to a directory of over 240 countries and, and, uh, and, and counties and so forth, making sure bringing the right information in to the different systems. And then a large use case and a prominent one for us is data replication. So you've moved your data in, you've got it synchronized, you've got you know, high data quality, high degree of data quality, and now you get your data out of a cloud app and bring it down into an on-premise environment. Uh, for perhaps compliance or backup or for uh, analytics. Those are some of the use cases. The architecture we built, do um, you want to give us a quick overview of kind of the, the way this works architecturally, Ron? Yeah, sure. So the way it works is you first log into Informatica Cloud and sign up for an account. What you wanted to download is something called our secure agent. Now, this is something that we actually leverage some of the core Informatica technology that's been developed over the last 17 years. So you're having an enterprise strength integration engine that's now going to be part of your, you know, something that you would download and residing behind your firewall. That's how we get access to those on-premise systems to deal with the use cases that Darren talked about, that, that on-premise to cloud integration. 
go off, you sign up with Informatica Cloud, you download the secure agent. Again, that's a one-time thing. That's self-updating, self-upgrading. And then from there, when you actually execute jobs, you design everything through the user interface, and this agent will connect to your local systems and then push the data back and forth with the cloud. All right, that is what we've really been focusing on over the last couple of years. And to characterize where we saw a lot of our growth coming from and where the adoption, and it's still often the case, it's much been what we characterize as outside in. We're at a lot of line of business purchasing of SaaS applications. In many cases, uh, a cloud app might have come in through a department or a division, and you know, IT, centralized IT may or may not have been involved in the initial procurement and even implementation of that application. So our, our primary use case has been focusing on um, serving the needs of the application owners. We've built a very easy to use cloud integration service and we, we even see you know, sales ops, business analysts, and CRM administrators uh, running Informatica Cloud themselves. You know, people who don't traditionally have a lot of data integration uh, experience or, um, or around, being able to really take advantage of the self-service of Informatica Cloud. So that's been where we've seen a lot of the traction and growth over the last few years. And, and really, to speak to that, you visit trust.informaticacloud.com, and you go and see you know, how much we're running, how many jobs we're running every day, how many records we're processing through the cloud service. We're excited to be able to say that we're now really you know, processing over a billion transactions a day. So it's pretty heavy lifting running, running through a multi-tenant cloud integration service. Now, seen over the last couple of releases, and look at some of the functionality, and Ron will speak to this in his demonstration, is the need, you know, as we've seen a shift where many enterprise IT organizations are becoming cloud first in nature, where they actually have to, in many cases, justify why not cloud, right? Very big difference from, you know, just a couple of years ago. Um, we're seeing more what we call inside out purchasing, where, or in implementation where a centralized IT organization is very much involved in the, in the decision making. In many cases, they're trying to rationalize and, and uh, you know, consolidate multiple instances of even the same cloud application. So we've seen a, sort of a SaaS sprawl and a set of uh, silos in, in many cases emerge. And a shift where IT, as uh, you know, executive said to me not too long ago, it's like, look, we can either get run over by this cloud train or we can get on board. And, and we're seeing, you know, more of this, you know, desire to get on board. Now, of course, what that means is a, a real strong uh, requirement around governance, security, administration. And John, in particular, who's been with Informatica a long, long time, he goes out and talks to some of the longtime Informatica customers. And these are the things that they've wanted to see around, you know, access controls and delegated administration, uh, the ability to have de a, a robust development and test environment before moving to production and so forth. So we've really been focusing on this layer of our product line over the last couple of releases. And, you know, we're, we're, we're about to, as I mentioned earlier, go to Informatica World next week. And this has been a very hot topic with very long time Informatica um, organizations. You know, you don't necessarily have to use or run Informatica to be like a cloud customer. But increasingly, more and more of those customers want to take advantage of the self-service capabilities of our cloud offering. And we're seeing this idea of a hybrid IT organization emerging. And these are the kinds of features um, that Ron will talk to in his demonstration. So fine grain access control, the ability to have a, a really a parent-child type of uh, implementation where you have uh, one you know, master org of Informatica Cloud, and then you can provision sub-orgs out to different uh, defense or groups within your organization. So balancing the need for self-service with that desire and demand and and, and requirement for strong, robust IT governance and control. Um, you know, the concept, Ron, I know you've talked to a lot of large customers about this concept. Do um, you want to just talk to this idea of an integration comedy center and what that might mean for Informatica Cloud? Sure. So what a, large of, what a lot of the larger organizations do is they have a centralized team within IT that tries to put in some standards, standard processes, standard definitions, you know, put in best practices so that people do integration in a fairly consistent way. So as Aaron was talking about, the outside in piece is great for the individual project since they have a lot of control over what they need to do. But, you know, again, from a central IT standpoint, they would like to have some level of at least insight 
and try to push some best practices out to the other groups and projects. So what we're actually seeing is that, you know, with the inside out play, there's some centralized organization that isn't necessarily providing full ownership and not necessarily setting directives, but you know, what we're actually doing is trying to facilitate some reuse and, and some leverage of, of best practices across the different projects. So that's what we're really seeing being pushed out there right now. So we introduce some of the enterprise enhancements um, before diving into a, a live demo of them. Um, you know, there's this idea of development and production with the object migration feature. So the, the support for SUSE Linux and others uh, and it's around Salesforce API. Yeah, so this, these three bullet items that Darren's just talking about are what's new as part of the spring 2012 release. Um, specifically around enterprise and, and, and those sorts of enhancements. But it's actually something that many of you that are existing customers have been asking for. So you already have or had object migration capabilities, but it wasn't as functional as everyone would like. So when I go in through the demo, I'll show the enhancements where specifically we're able to take pretty much every kind of task or object that you have in Enomatica Cloud and move it from one instance or one org to another. Most common use case here are people that have a little bit more of a mature IT process that have a very specific environment for dev, one for test, one for prod. This functionality is there to address moving content back and forth between those different environments quickly and easily. The second one here is explicit support for SUSE Linux. Um, you know, this is something we are adding explicit support on top of Red Hat. So now we've got the two most popular versions of Linux fully supported. The third piece here is around what we're doing with the API, and this is a, something you'll see with every single release of Informatica Cloud that we have, where we're constantly having the API to match what's current with Salesforce. So over, uh, you can share your desktop, and um, we'll, we'll dive to a couple of these features as well as uh, some of the other, I wonder if you could also highlight some of the delegated administration capabilities and a few other enhancements in that area that people might not be already taking advantage of I might be interested in. No problem, I can do that. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to focus, though, on is the object migration enhancements that are part of Spring 2012. Okay, it's Informatica Cloud. And if I go to the administration tab, what well, is the link for migrate objects? Now, I'm logged in as my prod user, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate some of the work that I've tested out in my dev environment. I'm going to move it here into prod. Now, if I take a look right now, my prod is empty. I don't have any sync tasks, validation, replication. I don't have any connections, any task flows built, and so forth. So I'm, this is just a fresh element of data, and uh, this is just one of the use cases that are there. I'm going to go to migrate objects, Hit start migration. First, that it's, I'm prompted for is to give the login of the org that I want to move data from. So I'm logging in now to my dev instance. Okay. There we go. Hit the add objects button. And here, and this is what's new, before we show the individual task types, data sync, data replication, data assessment. And what we're showing here now is pretty much any of the major bits of content that you might want to migrate over. Commonly, the most commonly requested enhancement was you know, task flows defined with potentially tens if not hundreds of tasks containing them. That is an entire entity that I've tested. I want to move the whole thing over. And that is one of the things that's new here in spring 2012. So here I choose task flows, and I'll type prod daily tasks, and I hit add. What this recognizes is that task flow is actually made up of multiple tasks that have a certain order already predefined, and each of the tasks have different connections, plugins, and so forth that are being used within them, and automatically inferred and, and recognized. So I just choose the task flow that I want to move over. All of this is inferred. And I go ahead and click the Alert button. And we're currently migrating everything over. And everything 
was successful. So now, if you take a look here at the synchronization, you see the data sync tasks that were part of that task flow, the content validation tasks, replication. You also see the different actions used by each of those tasks. You even see things like the plugins used. First, the task flow itself has been put over. And here we see again the tasks in the order that uh, I was expecting. So a very simple set of steps to do some pretty complex migration from one environment to another. I do want to remind people, if you have some questions, um, you know, we can, you can chime in now and we'll take them as we go through. Uh, but that looks great. I know you've had good feedback uh, already from customers using this feature. Oh, yeah. Customers love it, and our sales engineers love, love it, too. So it's been great. Right, so this thing I just want to touch upon again, since um, a lot of people still aren't familiar with these capabilities, as Darren mentioned, we have, uh, we've had some of these enterprise requirements or, or features available for about a year. So this thing I just want to make sure everybody's aware of is we do have this concept of delegated administration. And the concept here is, again, you are one of those ICCs or a center of excellence, trying to get multiple projects to work together and, and start collaborating. Now, what you can do is log into a master org and find this concept of sub-orgs. Under my master org, I've already done some work. But if I see what's going on with project one, I simply go ahead and highlight that. And here we see, okay, yeah, they've run stuff. They have errors, but everything seems to be okay now. And I take a look at project two, and we see that they actually haven't done anything. But I go into the administration tab. I can take a look at the audit logs to see what was done in project two and project one, and, and even within my org, the master org. So really, the key concept here is that we're basically sharing some multi-tenant administration capabilities that we have and that we use on a daily basis, and we're sharing it with the larger enterprises or or, or Customers that want to have multiple instances of Informatica Cloud, but still have some way of, of having insight in what's happening with all, all those orgs. And we have some, uh, some of our um, IT OEM partners on the call as well, and this is a, function, a piece of functionality that they will be also taking advantage of. Yeah, for sure. This is definitely one of the things that resonates very, very well with ISVs, where they are an Informatica Cloud customer, but they have multiple customers themselves. So they would be able to see what they're doing as well as what their customers are doing, so it's a very powerful functionality. The thing that I just wanted to highlight and remind everybody of is the concept of, of um, permissions and groups. So we have this concept of a user group where we've seen this is a very common case where there's a set of folks that are developers. They're about to build and create things against the dev environment, but there's a, a separate ops team, and they're the only ones allowed to move things and run things in the production and we have a look, the developers, they have the ability to create, modify, and run any of the individual tasks, but they can only read and not create or update some of the global objects, like the secure agent connections and schedules. And then on the flip side, you've got the operations team, which of course have the ability to build those global objects. They can read and run specific tasks, but can't actually go off and modify the things that the development team has created. For that, and you also now have this ability to have permissions set at an object layer. So for instance, for my production Salesforce connection, right now by default, the developers have read access, but maybe I don't want to let anybody have any chance of causing any trouble with my production. So I can go in and specifically say that the development team actually doesn't have read access to the connection point, when they log into the wizards, it doesn't show up. This connection doesn't even show up in their in their list of connections available to them. So there's a chance of them accidentally reading or writing into the production report. So the functionality, things that are resonating extremely well with the uh, the enterprise customers. So similar to, say, data replication and, and, uh, and our um, data quality, as well as the address validation capabilities, the, the Access control functionality is only available to standard and above customers. So Correct. you may not even be aware that this is possible. So definitely want to dig into what's, what's available in standard if you're on a, a basic or below edition. That's right. Okay, so let's switch gears and, and talk about uh, some of the platform capabilities of the Informatica Cloud. Some and, and I think directionally this speaks to where we're going and where we see 
uh, a tremendous growth opportunity for our partners uh, as well around Informatica evolving uh, to an integration platform as a service. So that was an overview of some of the administration and governance capabilities, and, and we definitely like to make sure you're taking advantage of those and, and want your feedback. You can, you can also make sure you're Join, you've joined the Informatica Cloud Community website, which Ron will uh, highlight uh, in a minute. So let's talk about the concept of integration platform as a service. It's getting a lot of attention from the industry. Uh, you know, as, as a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion around platform as a service generally. So if you're a Salesforce.com customer, you're familiar with Salesforce's CRM apps, whether it's Sales Cloud or Service Cloud uh, and so forth. And you're probably also very familiar with Force.com and really being able to extend what's possible and build custom apps on the Salesforce platform. Now, a key part of this for Informatica is we don't want to be a platform as a service, but we want to be the integration layer to your platform. So we're actually working with a lot of Force.com ISV partners and ensuring that integration is part of their app. And we see a lot of uh, you know, new capabilities coming specifically for some of those types of partners. We also need to then be able to connect really just about anything out there, really what we call the long tail of SaaS applications. Uh, anything with a web services API, Informatica Cloud should be able to uh, integrate with and, and, and deliver connectivity for. So that is really uh, a key part of what's being announced or what we have announced with the Spring release. And there's really two components to what, what we're calling our integration platform as a service. The first is a, co a Cloud Connector Toolkit which will really enable our partners and ultimately our customers as well over time as we roll this out over a number of releases to be able to build custom connectors and deliver them through the Informatica Cloud service. Also, to be able to package them up and potentially, if, if you're interested, to be able to deliver them through the Informatica marketplace. This part of our integration platform as a service and that we've announced is uh, what we call Cloud Integration Templates. So specifically designed um, to take advantage of the Cloud Connector Toolkit, but really be, uh, enable you to embed cloud integration into your application or platform. And we'll go through that uh, in this, uh, this second half of today's discussion and presentation. So why don't you walk through how the toolkit works. Uh, we'll go through both of these and then kind of dive into uh, a demonstration. All right, great. So what we here is, is a new toolkit, as Darren mentioned, to build new native Informatica Cloud Connectors, and I'll specifically talk about what that means. So a history on, on how this was created. So any of you that have known Informatica for a while may say, well, wait a minute, Informatica's had a connector SDK since 1999. Uh, why are we having another connector toolkit uh, available? Well, the reason is that the current SDK is a C++-based SDK. First of all, you know, there are more Java programmers these days than C++ programmers, so that, that's one thing. The other is that the current SDK that Power Center, the Informatica on-premise offering, has is a very full-featured and robust SDK. At the same time, you know, there's a lot of power there, and, and that's what was used to build things like our SAP, our Oracle eBusiness Suite, our Siebel Connector, and so forth. Now, a lot of functionality, a lot of power, however, it is something that is very low level and can take, you know, standard novice Java developer some time, a lot of time really, to understand how to use it. So what we're deciding to do is to a first come up with something that would be adopted more readily, hence we chose Java, and then suddenly we created an abstraction layer on top of the core SDK. An abstraction layer is specifically designed to be able to work easily with cloud-based web service-based, RESTful-based APIs, right? So there's a lot of commonality between all the different apps that we're seeing these, these days. There's a some form of a login call, which passes back some sort of a cookie or session ID. And there's certain ways that you perform queries where it gives you data in groups. So you have to constantly query and make sure you get all of the data you need, certain ways that you deal with write. Right? There are certain things that are common from a from a um, conceptual standpoint across all these apps, and that's what you see in the toolkit. To point where, is we have an idea of how the API that you're trying to connect, create a connector for 
if you have an idea of how that works and you understand Java, you should be able to prototype within a matter of just a couple days and build a full-fledged, uh, fully robust informatic cloud native connector within a matter of a couple weeks, two to four weeks, depending on the API that you're trying to pull from. So much more rapid development than in the past, and what you get is a native look and feel field connector. So once you build it, the end user experience is just like what you see with Informatica Cloud. So what gets exposed to the end user customer is the same experience that you see when you're trying to connect to Salesforce, when you try to connect to files, when you connect to databases. It's that same look and feel. So the end user really go off to Informatica Cloud, go to the place, choose the connector, it automatically will get installed, and you would just simply see the new connector appear it drop down when they're creating new connections. And then you would simply use the synchronization wizard and the other offerings just as you would today with those other offerings. So very, very straightforward user experience and very quick and rapid development. All right, then as mentioned, well, we're not exposing to the end users. And this is a, a kind of approach for a lot of the other approaches that are out there today is when people say, oh, yeah, we can connect to that. But well, what, what gets exposed is essentially a view at the web services API. And that's the approach that we're taking. What we're, we're basically showing is that simple, easy-to-use interface that uh, our customers are used to seeing. We are going to heavily leverage the Informatica marketplace. You know, it's been in existence now for two years, and we're going to continue to go off and, and put all of these new connectors that we build, that, that our partners build. So definitely keep an eye out on that. Um, we're showing you, when I get back, back to the next set of demos, I'll, I'll take a quick peek at the um, marketplace so you can see what's out there today. Great. So really all about the um, ability to rapidly build connectors. And, and we'll talk about availability but at the end, but I'll also give a quick uh, summary now. Um, the the Cloud Connector Toolkit is being used by a few of our uh, key partners now, and it's also being used uh, extensively by our own Informatica Cloud Labs team to build what, what Ron related that's available already on the marketplace. So we'll be rolling this out, uh, you know, slowly over the next couple of releases and making it more broadly available. But do contact us. Uh, you can sign up for the developer edition on the Cloud website, uh, and we'd love to get you involved and, and get your input. The second part of this is, is really for, for those of you on today's call or watching today's webinar who are um, technology companies or need to become technology companies uh, who are really looking to build cloud apps or platforms and really need integration. I mean, maybe it's for an onboarding of your new customers. Um, so in fact, uh, over the last you know, year or two, has done some, some extensive work with a couple of key um, technology vendors and building their applications. So we've worked very, very closely with our friends at Dun & Bradstreet. We're working very closely with MicroStrategy as part of MicroStrategy Cloud. So we've learned a lot along the way, and now we're going even further with what we call dynamic cloud integration templates. The templates are, are really built on the Cloud Connector Toolkit. It's kind of the next level up. Uh, and it's more of you know, recognizing that there's repeatable processes. You, not only do you need connectivity to an app, but typically you're connecting, you know, multiple uh, applications and you're going to have the ability for a customer uh, to really quickly get up and running and recognize that, you know, instead of inventing the wheel each time, maybe it's an opportunity to order type of workflow between Salesforce and SAP, uh, a very common uh, use case for Informatica. Those are the things you want to make available. And we've been working really hard on not only making those available as prepackaged integration uh, workflows, but to all make them um, parameterized, so really dynamic in nature from an energy consumption perspective. So we're going to talk about that because I know this is an area that you've been working closely with a lot of our uh, ISV partners on. Yeah, yeah. So I think probably the best way to actually talk about this is to go through a very, very specific example. So I'm going to go ahead and share my, my desktop again. And what I'd like to show you and talk about is the work that we're doing with exactly. So really, for those who aren't aware, they are a cloud compensation management solution. Right? So they, they, they calculate commissions for sales reps. 
and it helps send the customers to go off and um, or help the, the reps go off and understand, all right, what am I getting paid today? What happens? What will I get paid if I close this, this deal? Okay, so it's, it's, that's, that's basically what they're working on. And we worked with Exactly on a prototype where it's a product called Exactly Express, which is built on the force.com platform. And they have a use case where they have customers that have order data inside of QuickBooks that's running locally behind each customer's firewall. So they want to use a quick and easy way to have rebuilt innovation with QuickBooks with their application. So what we ended up doing with them is we created a set of cloud integration templates, as Darren talked about. And these are essentially pre-built maps that are made from QuickBooks to exactly the Express. You know, in a very specific use case like that, dealing with some very, you know, with fixed endpoints, you know, exactly exactly as the target QuickBooks as a source, you have a high amount of reuse of all customers. But you still want to provide some level of configuration. So the customer needs to be able to, as you can see here in this drop down in the upper left, be able to provide some form of, let's say, a basic filter. Every customer may want to pull over certain orders just for their business case. Right? So some level of customization on top of the pre built integration. So the point here is that provide the capability and provide that capability in a user interface that is native to the end user's experience. And again, you'll see this in the demo. So what behind the scenes is that everything is going to be driven from the exactly interface, but what actually gets run and what executes everything is Informatica Cloud. Cloud integration templates are actually stored in Informatica Cloud. Configuration points, that filter condition that I talked about, is to Informatica Cloud, which turn notifies a secure agent sitting behind the customer's firewall on the exact customization to those mappings that need to be performed so that the data can move back and forth. All right, it'll become much more clear when we take a look at the demo. All right, let's first start off with the cloud template that we built together. Again, from QuickBooks invoices, and we're loading into exactly as a target. For every customer, there's a certain amount of formatting that's going to occur that just simply to translate the format from QuickBooks into what exactly needs. So every customer is going to see that, and you don't have to worry about that piece. You want to provide, again, some level of customization. So let each customer specify a filter that makes sense for them. And what you see with this integration template that we have done things like this. The filter condition, the dot inv underscore filter dollar designates that this is a parameter. So let each customer specify their own filter. Right? So what we do with this is built this, we agree that this is what we want, this is the kind of customization we want to allow each customer to be able to provide. And what we did here is we uploaded template into Informatica Cloud. So we've got in that inside of Informatica Cloud, and what gets exposed within Informatica Cloud are parameters. And here you specifically see the filter parameter that's out there. And we do that. Once you publish a template to Informatica Cloud, what essentially happens now is there's a REST API that's in Informatica Cloud where a partner now basically invoke these these templates. So let's see how that works with exactly. All right, so I'm going to log in to exactly's interface. Here, we're in the exactly express offering. This is actually their product right now, the, the production version of the product. And see that there's an area here to import deals. So I have my QuickBooks data move it into exactly. And you see right now, this is the current interface. They currently support Salesforce and support external CSV files to be moved in to Exactly Express. Now, what they worked on with us is if you take a look, they'll point to the aimforce.com URL, but what they built in their look and feel, a native integration solution 
for QuickBooks to exactly. So now you see a radio button for QuickBooks. When you have that selected behind the scenes, there's a REST API call that invokes the template that I just showed you inside of Informatica Cloud. And then here, when you say types of deals to import, you're just going to, and this is going to be custom for every customer. So every customer can have a different set of configuration on top of that common template. Yeah, I want to say where item code is equal to XA123. And every customer is going to have different item codes, of course. So the keep here, you've got a very contained user interface, very simple and easy to use. Most people wouldn't even consider this integration, and it's embedded inside of the exactly interface. But what is happening, again, behind the scenes is it's actually being processed and executed using Informatica Cloud. So for the ISVs is provide your end users a native in an experience, native to your app, no to required, but have the ISV doesn't have to focus on building out integration from scratch, which as we know is a very difficult thing to do. So let our expertise, ISV companies can work on, on their core competency and we'll take care of the basic data moving back and forth between the various apps that, that are required. So if you're an technology company, you take uh, you focus on innovation and let Informatica focus on the integration. Uh, exciting. A uh, lot of lot of good things happening with, with some, some innovative companies. Uh, we'll be at Exactly's user conference next week in San Francisco. We'll also be at, um, at NetSuite's conference in, in, in San Francisco, as well as around Informatica World. So a uh, very big week and a lot of uh, exciting things happening around cloud integration. So just to, uh, to kind of bring it to a close, um, the Informatica Cloud Spring release uh, was all of our customer, customers were upgraded, updated to the latest uh, set of capabilities on April 21st. So if you're you know, looking at our trust site, you can make sure you're subscribing to the RSS feed there to get any updates, uh, you know, et cetera. But uh, so all customers are now on the latest version. The developer edition, if you um, really walk through some of that, it is available in pre-release. Uh, Ron, if you're uh, online, let's just pop over to um, to the website for a second. And if you go to Informatica Cloud's website, and you'll see the what's new in the spring release on um, on the homepage, big big you know some banner there. Um, so the first thing you see is that banner, and then also this developer edition. So let's click on learn more here. So go to the Cloud site, go learn more. You'll see a couple of demos and a few other resources and some details on each of these capabilities. If you click on Developer Edition, for the you who are you know, consultants or Informatica partners, uh, you might want to sign up to get updates on this. Uh, you know, we're going to be initially working with a few partners very closely to sort of stress test and roll this out uh, slowly. But we do want, we'll be providing regular updates and drawing more people into the program over the next couple of months. So you go to the uh, Informatica Cloud website and sign up. Let us know if you're interested in the connector toolkit, if you're interested in templates, if, if you're interested in both, you know, what systems you want to integrate with, uh, what kind of processes you're focused on. So that's a, that's a resource for you just uh, to be aware of for the Informatica Cloud Summer release. So we're really excited. We'll just wrap up with uh, one other uh, resource, which is always, if you're new to Informatica Cloud, we need you to really go in and get started. So if you go to the home page, there is uh, a 30 drop. Um, you know, this is the job of, of, of the cloud, right? So you don't have to wait for us. You can go ahead and get started on your own. Uh, visit informaticacloud.com, sign up for trial, dive in, start to, start to do some things, and, and try for yourself. The other source I wanted to highlight uh, that I mentioned earlier is our community. And this is becoming increasingly active, you know, if questions, if you're using you know, various editions of Informatica Cloud, there's lots of detail, release notes, et cetera, on the community. Um, you know, a lot of our product managers, people on Ron's team, you know, I'm trying to get Ron out there a little more himself, but <laughs> busy guy. Uh, you'll see Krupa on here and Josh from a usability expect uh, perspective. So in the community, you know, do join the conversation, and, and we, we definitely want to hear from you. There's one other place on the community I wanted to highlight, which is the ideas. Uh, an area we're just really starting to promote. So if you're an existing customer and you haven't seen what you're looking for or you want to um, you know, look at what, what others are saying, do check out our ideas site and put some of these up uh, and you know, add your comments and see some good dialogue going on with Informatica Cloud Product Management. 
So with that, I um, want to draw to a close today's webinar. Um, we look forward to, to really rolling some of these capabilities out over the next few months. And as always, we look forward to your feedback and, and look forward to working with you uh, as you think about connecting your, your clouds uh, in the next uh, step of our software as a service and cloud computing um, evolution. Thank you for joining. Um, you can tweet Informatica Cloud at, at InfoCloud. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. A question that came in real quick, are there any plans in the works for cloud integration templates with Workday? The answer is definitely yes. Um, please keep in touch, and, and we'll give you guys uh, updates on, on how that's progressing. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that does good our meeting for today. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.